Hi guys, welcome to another video of Holy Outdoor. In this video, we've done an extensive review of the top five emergency radios and we discuss all their key features and what things to consider before you pick the best one for you. Price information and all radios mentioned in the video are available in the description. You can also find a more detailed analysis and reviews of the best emergency radios on our website, holyoutdoor.com. Before we dive in, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a video from us. So let's get started. Number five, Eaton Scorpion 2. Want a rugged emergency radio to take along for your next camping trip? Eaton Scorpion 2 can fit the bill. This radio can take a beating in the outdoors and hold its own. The presence of an aluminum carabiner and the tough exteriors underline the expected use for the radio. This radio is intended as an update over the original Scorpion, and it delivers on the upgrade, but limits it to specific areas. Scorpion 2's 800 mAh lithium battery is a significant upgrade over the 350 mAh NIM battery from the previous version. Technological upgrades also bring a better photovoltaic cell to the radio, though its effects aren't as easily evident, especially with the larger battery. Other changes include an improved LED flashlight and the addition of a micro USB port for charging. The micro USB port allows charging the radio through AC power with an adapter. Alternatively, you can also use a power bank or a computer. Since this is an emergency radio, there are other options to draw power. Alternative means to generate power include a hand crank and photovoltaic cells. For a rugged radio, the crank isn't very rugged and is often a point of failure. I would not put my faith in the crank for this radio, and that's a bummer because turning the crank is a great way to get some power when you're outdoors or in a place or situation where electric power isn't available. If you need an alternative source of power, you'll have to put your faith in photovoltaic solar cells. The solar cell does better and can charge the battery within six to seven hours. When charged, the radio can power other devices, like a mobile phone. Keep in mind, though, this won't fully charge your phone. Rather, it's meant to get a few minutes of talk time in an emergency. As for conventional radio functions, Eaton Scorpion 2 can receive AM, FM, and NOAA weather band transmission. It can also listen to NOAA alerts and warnings. One disappointing feature about this radio is its lack of waterproofing. I'd expect a radio built for the rugged outdoors to be waterproof. However, with an IPX4 rating, the Scorpion 2 emergency radio is barely capable of handling a few droplets of water. Nevertheless, it's a great rugged emergency radio for the outdoors. Number 4. Midland ER310 The Midland ER310, like other portable emergency radios, radios doesn't receive SAME alert notifications, but does scan the seven NOAA weather channels and receive weather alerts. A small red light to the left and above the operating buttons comes on for an hour after a weather notification comes in to prompt you to check the NOAA weather channels for the last update. You have the option to set the radio to scan by channel or frequency. It comes with both day-to-day -day and emergency features. It has AM, FM, and NOAA weather radio stations, but while you can switch between the three, you can't preset the stations, so you will return to the last one you were on at each mode. Compared to the older model Midland ER210, this radio is slightly bigger but sturdier, has an easier hand crank, longer battery duration, and additional battery capacity by containing an additional battery space for six AA batteries in case you need an alternative to the proprietary Midland battery. The lithium-ion battery is fully rechargeable via a USB cable for the mains over about six hours. The battery can also be recharged using the solar panel, also taking up to six hours, though some reports suggest it will do so faster, while others suggest it will never get to full charge on the solar panel. Once charged, the battery should last 32 hours compared to 25 hours for the ER210 model. Hand cranks are useful for emergencies and while sturdier for the ER210, this one is still somewhat loose and flimsy. You can get a few minutes of charge from it after a decent burst of cranking, so save your arms and the hand crank by using the solar panel and mains to recharge wherever possible. In addition to the instructions, USB cables, and battery, the set comes with an emergency kit checklist. A thoughtful extra. Seriously though, you must make sure you test and maintain this emergency radio if it is part of your camping or survival kits. Don't leave it plugged in all the time and do set yourself a reminder to check, test, and recharge the battery every one to three months. The 2600 mAh batteries are proprietary to Midland, so replacing them is not always straightforward. Make sure you also have fresh double A's in your kit. The radio has a flashlight with high, low, and strobe settings. The low setting will prolong the battery, and the strobe is bright enough to attract attention, along with the silent for people dog whistle for rescuers if required. The LCD display will show a dog icon flashing if the dog whistle is on, so use this to double check you're not freaking the neighborhood dogs out. The display screen shows the time, which it alternates with the radio station playing, has a battery life indicator, and can be backlit. The LED display stays on and will drain the batteries over time time unless you take them out. In addition, you cannot disable the weekly alert test on this emergency radio unless
unless the batteries are flat or removed. The speaker volume has 12 settings and can reach around 87 decibels. Again, good for attracting attention when using the siren. Sound quality isn't great, but is adequate to hear messages. It has a nifty little tuck-away slot for the antenna, but it can be quite hard to pull out and push back in. The connector ports are under a rubber seal. For earphone jack, battery and USB charger, and the radio can charge your mobile device if required. The black and red plastic casing isn't waterproof or particularly sturdy, so you will need to take care of it in adverse weather and not throw it around too much on camping expeditions. Overall, it's a pleasantly compact portable emergency radio with a comfortable grab handle and plenty of useful functions for day-to-day -day outdoors and in emergencies. Number 3. Foss Power Original This compact portable emergency weather radio is simply designed using analog functionality and manual switches to move between modes, improving power usage compared to LCD display counterparts. The Foss Power Original picks up on NOAA, AM, and FM radio stations, but won't receive weather updates unless the radio is turned on and you are turned into a weather station. Sound quality is reasonable and reception can be improved by extending the small telescoping antenna tucked neatly into the body of the radio. Foss Power Original's greatest feature is its multiple power options as it comes with a 2000 mAh battery, which can be recharged via a micro USB port from the mains, from a hand crank, and via an inbuilt solar panel on the top. In addition, it has a separate battery compartment which takes three AA batteries, which can be turned on by switching the battery mode over. Main power charging is the most effective way of keeping this radio fully charged, however. A steady hand crank over four hours can also fully charge the battery if you have the time, patience, and endurance. The solar panels are not recommended for charging the device as it is very slow. It's best used to elongate battery use on sunny days. A small light near the tuner panel glows red when the radio is recharging and will turn green when the battery is fully recharged. This radio can act as a cell phone charger, though of course it will drain the batteries to do so. However, especially with the crank handle option, you can get enough power into a mobile device to make calls. Don't expect it to charge the phone fast or fully, though. Underneath the radio is a toggle switch between SOS alarm, off, and cell phone charger mode, which people seem to forget about. Switching this toggle to SOS activates an incredibly loud siren and turns on a flashing red beacon, though the radio doesn't emit an SOS radio signal. A reading light is tucked under the solar panels, which you tilt up to access, and a small telescopic antenna is tucked into the body of the radio, well out of the way. The flashlight beam focus is adjustable by twisting the casing at the front. On the downside, it does have to be on if you want to receive alerts, and it has no headphone jack for private listening. Overall, it's a great emergency radio for outdoor use, as its fairly durable hard plastic casing is water-resistant, and it comes with a lanyard and carabiner, making it easy to carry around. Note that this model was upgraded in 2020, and you can now get versions with a 4000 mAh battery and or digital LCD screen. Overall, this is the best budget emergency radio we've reviewed. Number 2. Eaton Sidekick Eaton Sidekick is an option that can be a sidekick to your adventurous self. This is an excellent emergency radio, but it also packs small conveniences like Bluetooth, a reading light, and a remarkable speaker. No wonder this model is called the Eaton Ultimate Camping Radio. Incidentally, this is also the same radio as Eaton FRX5 with a model number NFRX5 Sidekick. I find it weird that they have these models with minimal to no variations. Eaton Sidekick shows clear benefits over comparable models like the Eaton FRX3 and FRX3+. Plus. These models are lower on the totem pole and miss some of the luxury features like Bluetooth, aux connectivity and a USB port, even though their designs are almost the same. Admittedly, these features are optional for an emergency radio, but if you're carrying a radio along for camping and fun, it might as well have all the cool features. The design language of Eaton's FRX series is pretty cool, yet modern and utilitarian. However, there is an annoying downside. Control buttons on the radio are tiny and placed right below the bar, covering on its top. This design choice makes those buttons somewhat difficult to read and access. It's especially annoying for those with thick fingers. Thankfully, the radio more than makes up for these annoyances with its features and usability. The crank seamlessly blends with the design of the radio rather than sticking out. It's still easy to pull the crank into position and move it to charge the battery. Turning the crank for four minutes will charge it enough for 10 minutes of radio operation. Solar panels for the Sidekick 2 are embedded neatly at the top of the radio. Place it in the sun and the solar panels will completely charge the 2600 mAh lithium battery in about five hours. Alternatively, plug in the micro USB with an AC wall adapter or power bank and the radio will come to life. You can also charge your devices like a mobile phone through the radio by connecting to its USB port. The front of the radio holds its crank, speaker display, and knobs for volume and tuning. An ambient light with a dimmer that covers most of the radio's back. It's understandable why they call it the ambient light and not the usual lingo of reading light. The light is bright enough to light up a small space rather well. The presence of the dimmer gives a nice touch of control over the light intensity and thus the ambience. Other lights on the radio include a bright LED flashlight and a red beacon for SOS signaling. Eaton Sidekick works with AM, FM, and NOAA weather channel signals. An excellent quality is the inclusion of same specific area message encoding signals.
alerts, which provide weather alerts more specific to your region set by country. For most users, SAME is a better choice for receiving weather alerts over the PEAS system that most other radios employ. SAME alerts are better targeted and more relevant, although if you're driving or moving across countries, you will have to remember to keep the SAME codes on the radio updated. SAME uses country-specific codes, and this excellent emergency radio will do the rest. The alerts it issues are related to the country and the areas or countries in its neighborhood. Overall, this is the best premium emergency radio we've reviewed. Number 1. Kaito Voyager KA500 Kaito Voyager KA500 is an excellent mix of versatility and value. It is a NOAA-certified weather radio and can pick up a variety of signals and carries an acceptable price tag. One downside to the Kato KA500 is that it uses an analog interface. Digital interface would have made this radio a very well-rounded product, yet the analog interface has its uses and is intuitive. Kato handles the digital touch with the next higher model, the Kato Voyager KA600. Apart from conventional emergency radio features, this model also includes an alarm clock and digital display. The temperature and humidity display is a pretty nice touch, though they're missing in KA500. However, the KA600 comes at a steeper price when compared to the KA500. Voyager KA500 handles its analog interface elegantly. Half the radio's face is dedicated to the speaker, while the remaining area shows some knobs and a prominent frequency display selector. The first knob opens selection for one of the seven NOAA channels. Next comes the band selector. The radio works with FM, AM, SW1, SW2, and NOAA weather bands. Finally, there's the power selector, which includes the option to keep the radio on the weather alert setting. Kaito's KA500 weather alert works on P's public emergency alert system. It's a useful and adequate system, though I feel same specific area message encoding is a better choice for emergency radios. On the right side of the radio is the frequency tuning dial, volume control knob, and an LED flashlight. Though tiny, the flashlight is strong. The use of a lead chip instead of lamps shines quite literally in this case. While we're on the topic, all lights on the radio are functionally decent. The reading light has five LEDs that provide sufficient ambient light. A dimmer would have made these better, but the current function is acceptable too. Then there's the red SOS beacon that blinks when activated. It should be sufficient to catch someone's attention, example, rescuers, should you find yourself in a fix. The SOS beacon and the reading light are located on the top of the radio. The left side holds the hand crank to get the dynamo rolling. At first glance, the crank and its attachment look flimsy, as if it would break once you start cranking this emergency radio. Thankfully, it's working and connections are all solid. Cranking two to three minutes charges the battery enough to last for 10 to 15 minutes. Speaking of the battery, the radio features a rechargeable 600 mAh NIM battery. It's adequate to run the radio and even charge your devices like a mobile phone, though as you may have noticed, the battery capacity is low. As such, the phone charging is very limited. You can probably nudge the battery indicator up by 1 or 2 percent when the phone battery is low. For an emergency, the charging should be enough to give you a minute or so of talk time. Kaito Voyager's KA500's versatility is partly due to the way this radio draws power. It's conventionally a four-way power radio, which means it can draw power from four different sources. However, it uses some modifications which increase the options to keep the radio powered. These are hand crank, solar power, AA batteries, three, five volt AC DC input with power adapter, and 5 volt USB input, example from a power bank. It's also possible to use a replacement NIM battery. The well secured battery compartment includes room for the rechargeable battery and the AA batteries. Right beside it is a protective rubber flap that covers many connectivity and charging options. These include a headphone jack, micro USB jack, AC power adapter jack, and a USB jack. A tiny on off switch controls power to the USB jack for easier handling. Though tiny, the on off switch is notable and important. You shouldn't charge a device like a mobile phone while the radio is charging. Overall, Kaito Voyager KA500 is a decently built emergency radio with a good range of features and versatile functions. So what do you think? Which of these five is the best emergency radio for you? Or do you think another radio is better? Tell us in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Have an awesome day.